You may be seated. The children are dismissed to go past grandma. Matthew 16, 
So uh, bear with me. Uh, now today's message, I have to. Uh, it's it's biblically, you know, the the biblical theology might be a little on the heavy side, but I believe that you have the capability of understanding the Word of God today. I really do believe that, and I really believe that God is going to say some some key words uh, in order to understand what He is trying to say to His beloved. Amen. So um, let's read together first of all Matthew nine thirty five to thirty eight. The Word of God says this. You might have it in a different version, but it says this. Then Jesus went about the, through all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Oh, we can relate to that right now, right? Like sheep with no shepherd, uh, with a, without a leader. So, um, and, and we can relate to this. And then verse 37 says, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so, and, and let's go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verses 13 through 19. And we'll bring it all together. You'll see. <laughs> chapter, uh, chapter 16, verse 13 and on says this. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon or Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Amen? Amen. Real quick, so close your eyes, because um, follow your eyes, Father God. I move aside the Holy Spirit, you would be the one to speak, to give this message. We come with open hearts. And we break bread together so that you may feed us more. Make your word flesh in us. That it may speak. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. So, um, so I, 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 in order to understand how sometimes how we think, I, I feel I need to uh, speak a little in, uh, of the past. And, and uh, many of us know uh, a philosopher named by the name of Plato. Amen. By the name of Plato. Uh, and uh, uh, Plato's kind of in, in, in the years of. 1400s, 300s, uh, before Christ, uh, he came up with some philosophy that shaped the thought of that time. And then that, uh, the, the shape of that time, uh, the effects of this, his, his thought followed his time, and from his time to the Romans, you know, to the Greeks, from the Greeks to the Romans, to the Romans to the Europeans, and so it made its way to the to the America. And, the, and so uh, that's how we have, our minds have been shaped that way. Our ancestors, our, 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 our people that have, that have come before us have been shaped in their mind. And so I want to speak a little of, of how the way we've been shaped because I want to talk something key. I was, I was uh, preparing this message. Um, I was asking the Lord, I want to preach a, a message that, that maybe uh, that I should uh, 
that have drinks before. And the Lord said, Nah, I'm going to drink something, something, something for my beloved, something specific for my beloved. And so I had to go and go do a whole fresh message. <laughs> and so, uh, so I have to preach. Uh, so I'm pre I, I get to preach a message here, and then a, a whole different message. And I'm going to pray for me. Pray for me, because uh, uh, then I'm going to see we're in Revelations. And so uh, I need some revelation to, to speak to other Asians. So uh, pray for me. But uh, I, I, I'm going to say that there is a specific word that God has given for us. And I have, and the title of this message, it's called Transition. Because we are in a time of transition, are we not? Yeah. In a pastoral transition. Uh, looking for the, for the direction of God to see what's the direction of, the, uh, of this beloved. Amen? And so, um, so we have to see the way we were shaped in our thinking in the past and how it has shaped our mind to think the way we think today. And, and the way why sometimes some of these fears arise because of the way we have been shaped. And so Plato said this. Plato said that there is a straight line between Good and evil. There is a strict line between black and white. A strict line between the physical and the spiritual. And you cannot cross with the other. In other words, that's what he's saying. You cannot cross one with the other. Or if you do, like they say, have you heard the, the term uh, uh, platonically incorrect? You know, platonically, that, that's where it comes from. Uh, whenever you cross one with the other, you're platonically inc incorrect. So, and, and, and so I wanna, I wanna do away with this thought, because as we go into the scriptures, Amen. As we go into the scriptures, uh, Christ, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Messiah, crosses all kinds of lines in the name of Jesus. Amen. He crosses all kinds of lines, and so, and, and so, as Plato is saying, you cannot cross one with the other. In other words, if today is Sunday, we come to worship, and, and, and we have a great time of celebration, because, and because it's Sunday, that's what we do on Sunday, but tomorrow, Monday, is the day of work. We begin our work day, so that means that we cannot cross our, our Sunday with our Monday, you know? In other words, we cannot talk about Christ at the work area. That's what Plato says. But let me say this, when we get into the word, Christ says, and the apostles say, and the apostle Paul, Paul say, that you should take Christ with you everywhere. You should take him at work, you should take him with your family, you should take him with, any, with anything you do, whether you're at Walmart, whether you're at the laundry mat, or whether you're at home washing dishes, Christ should be always with you. And everywhere you go, Christ is always there. Amen? Talk about, talk about crossing lines. There you go. Boom. We just, we just slap Plato in the face, right? We just totally dismantle that kind of thought. Amen? Right? Because when we, we, when we follow this kind of thought, it begins to create fears in us. Oh, I cannot cross this because what if this happens? Oh, I'm going to be judged for what I say, for what I think. So, so you know what? Don't fret. Don't worry. You know, because you know why? In Christ, we can take Jesus everywhere. We can be uh, the, the, the beloved anywhere we are. We can be anywhere we want and know that Christ is with us, that his grace is with us, that his glory is with us, and that his presence is with us. Amen? So there's no fears. All those fears are put aside, laid to rest, because Christ has taken all those fears and crossing boundaries. And, I'm gonna, and we're going to see how this is going to be played out in the scripture. So let's go to see what the scripture has to say about this. Amen? We're about to see a transition in the life of Peter. Amen? We're going we're gonna to see a transition from... Oh, well, well, before I spoil it, let, let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. Um, so... We see Jesus, Scripture says in the second passage, that Jesus comes to Caesarea Philippi. Now, let me paint a picture of where they are. They come to Caesarea, Caesarea or Caesarea? One of those. In Spanish, it says Caesarea, so I'm, kind of, I'm sure I'm mixing both of them. 
of course, is Spanglish here. And so, Jesus and the disciples, they come to Caesarea, Philippi, and they begin to see all in the stones, there's the big stones, and in each stone, there's carved a certain type of God. A certain type of God up there, sealed, another one printed on this side, because where they were standing was a big rock. And so, he knew that where they are, there's a lot of worship of other gods going on. They're worshiping all kinds of gods, the gods of the sun, the gods of the ground, the gods of the plants, the gods of the rain, all kinds of gods. And so where they are, where they are standing, Jesus knows that there is, there is worship of the darkness in that area. And so that's where they are. And so it, it is funny, for, it, is, it is not funny, but interesting to me that Jesus would ask his disciples, what do men say about me? They're standing in a place where there is darkness, where they know there's so, so much, so much other, uh, other worship of other gods. And in that moment, he says, what do men say that I am? And so the disciples begin to say, some say that Jeremiah, some say that you're a prophet, that you're, uh, or you're Elijah, or that you're John the Baptist. And then he says, oh, okay. And then he begins to zone in a little more personal. And then he says this, who do you say, who do you say that I am? So the question is, you know, and you, and you begin to see this transition, this transition from, 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 from the darkness, from the secularism to the spiritual, amen? See, he begins to get personal. He begins to think, we see this transition from the people to his disciples. And then we're gonna see this transition from his disciples to one, Peter. Peter, who you and I can relate because we are fast to talk, fast to act, right? Just like me. Uh, I'm fast to talk and fast to act, and then I'm asking questions. How in the world did I get here? You know? How in the world did I get myself into this problem, into this mess? So, so I can relate to Pete, to Brother Pete, you know? And so, and so he did in this in this area, and he personalizes it by saying, Who do you say that I am? So the question. Sometimes we can ask ourselves, who do you say that I am? Who, in other words, who is Jesus Christ to you? Who is the Messiah to you? Is he a person that you can just hear? Is, is he a person that is he a person that you just have heard talk about? Or is he the Savior of your life? Is he the Lord of your life? If he is not, today can be the day of salvation. If he is not, today can be the day that you give your life and surrender your life to the Lord and know that he can be the Savior and the Lord of your life and know that you have a, a, a new name and you have a space in, in, in the heavens and know that there is a celebration in the heavens because every time someone comes to the Lord that, that, that confesses that Jesus is Christ in their life and surrenders their life to them, the word says that there's a big celebration. So today can be the day of salvation. I gotta throw that in there, amen? You know, throw that in there. That today can be the day of salvation. He can be the Lord of your life. Let's continue. So they're standing there, and he personalizes the question, who do you say that I am? And then something powerful happens. You have to hear this. Something really powerful happens. All of a sudden, Brother P, he claims out of his, out of his heart, out of his mouth, and he says, you are Christ. Now, 
are you at? Now, there's a reason why Jesus said, blessed are you, silent part. John, he just doesn't say, blessed are you, brother, my homie Pete, you know, my boy Pete. He just doesn't say that. He says, blessed are you, my, you know, uh, he says, Simon Bar Jonah. Now, there is power in names. You have to understand that. Every time Jesus spoke, he spoke with such intentionality, with such precision, right? So when he says Simon, you know the word Simon, it means in the, in, in, in the original language, it means hearer, listener, hearer or listener, Simon. And then he says Bar, Bar, which is the son. And then he uses the word Jonah, which Jonah represents, or it means also dove. So what is Jesus saying? He's saying, blessed are you, son of the dove, or in other words, in other words hearer of the dove. Now we know that the dove is also another symbol for the Holy Spirit. In other words, blessed are you, Simon, you have heard the voice of the Holy Spirit, and now you have, you have spoken what God has put into your life.
And I say to you that you are Peter. You are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. Oh, man. And I say that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. You see, the word, the word for Peter in the original is another word for small rock. Small rock. Petros. In Spanish, there's a name called Pedro. Pedro. We get that word from Petros, the original. Small rock. But then Christ says this. So when he said, you are Peter, he says, you are a small rock. But then he says this, and on this rock, with that word rock, in the original, is Petra. Petra. Big rock. Gigantic rock. Colossal rock. He's talking about himself. Jesus is talking about himself. He says, I cannot build my church upon Peter. No, because he is human. He's flawed. But if I build my church upon myself, Jesus says, upon himself, the big rock, the cornerstone, the rock where you are, who falls on him will be broken and be made whole again and new again. The, we're going from the big rock to the, to the, from the small rock to the big rock. We know, we know that in, in him, the cornerstone, there is victory. We know that anything you go through, whether you're going through depression, whether you're going through anxiety, whether you're going through a hard financial time, right now as we're going through this transition, we know that if we get in to the voice of the Spirit, we know we're going to walk in step and know that we're, we're, we're building our foundation upon the big rock, which is Jesus Christ, and we know He's going to lead us in the right way. Amen. He's going to lead us. Amen. So we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear because we know that our leader, our shepherd, He says in the, in the first passage, Oh, he had compassion on them. They, they were, they were, they were, they were walking like like sheep without a shepherd. But you know, let me tell you something. I have, I have good, good news for you today, this afternoon, this morning. Still, sorry, I think I'm preaching to all of you this afternoon. I have good news for you today. We're not walking without a shepherd. We are sheep with the shepherd of our shepherd, with the pastor of our pastors, the King of Kings, the Lion of Judah. So we have, we, we, we need not to fear because we are being led by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Woo! Woo! Amen. We just scored a field goal there. Praise his name. Oh, I honor his presence in this place. Amen. You see, when we come to the Lord and we lean in and we say, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender this. I surrender that. I surrender my husband to you. I surrender my wife to you. I surrender my kids to you. I surrender my job to you. I surrender this situation where it's really tough and causing so much grief in my life. I surrender it to you. And then we live. We lean in to hear the spirit, the dove. And so we go from small rock to stand on the solid rock. Amen. Amen. So that you see this transition. Oh, praise God for transitions. Praise God for transitions. I really believe the Lord can bring the beloved revival during the transition. Hallelujah. Because we're going to transition from a small rock to the solid rock, Jesus Christ. The Lion of Judah. Amen. I encourage you to lean in ourselves during this time. We have teams 
who are at NYC and the fire that cast there, I pray they bring it here. We have children who are going to team to kids camp and the fire that cast there, they bring here. Teens camp, the fire that they will be so overwhelmed by the presence of God that they will bring that fire back. <laughs> And then Sunday per Sunday, as we gather together here as a congregation, we catch that fire, and that fire will begin to continue to ignite others. Hallelujah. I see Trinity, the beloved, at the threshold. A new day has dawned. Because we're not listening, listening to man's voice. As we humble ourselves, we're listening to the dove, to the Holy Spirit, for direction. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe it. I believe it. So I love the fact that we're praying for our board because I have no, no doubt that God is going to use them. And as a staff, we've been praying so God has been taking care of our worries and we surrender that to him and we know that in him there is no need to fear. That's why we're at the threshold to take a new step, amen, on the solid rock. He is our shepherd. We have not, nothing to fear. Praise God for transitions. Hallelujah. Praise God for transitions. We're going to praise. And we're going to respond to God. And if you do, and there's some fears, or some stressors, or some anxiety, come and surrender it. Come and surrender it. Because the cornerstone, the solid rock, Jesus Christ is here to take it. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, He is ready to speak to your heart. Fear not. Fear not. All is well. He will use every situation to shake you and to ignite a fire in you. Oh, my God. 